Many women, including me, admit they are perfectionists, yet very few of us know what to do about it, and it starts with understanding it. So today we're gonna bust the myths of perfectionism. Studio 5 contributor Dr. Liz Hale joins me with perspective on this problem, and you know, we put this out on Social Five or yeah. Studio 5 social media, and got some serious responses. We did indeed. I and think every viewer, eye. every viewer should go and look. You know, Reagan was brave enough to say, yes, you know, I am a perfectionist, and no, I don't know what to do about it. You know, and perfectionism, you kind of know when you're a perfectionist, Amy, when you're in this never good enough. You know, I'm never thin enough, beautiful enough, strong enough, educated enough, spiritual enough, whatever enough. It's just never good enough. And so we hide behind this wall of perfectionism because I'm afraid that if you really knew me, you may deem me broken, unlovable, and not good enough. Mm. So we hide behind it. And something you point out is people never say, I'm a perfectionist and it makes me so happy. <laughs> That's so true, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, we have yet to have anyone say that perfectionism landed me this wonderful experience in my life. If anything, it's like when I was courageous enough to be vulnerable and imperfect, those were some of the best experiences I've ever had. And you know, it's interesting, Dr. Uh, Brene Brown, just determine this, that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, there's no authentic people versus inauthentic people. In other words, we go in and out of being authentic, you know? And I have this uh, poster in my office at home that says, you know, show up, be seen, and live brave. And I have to work on that every hour of every day. It's scary to do that. And yet there's no reward without trying to do your best to show up. Well, and I think sometimes um, we don't understand where we're going wrong. <laughs> like, like Renee said, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know what to do about it. And does that maybe come from we don't really understand the definition of what perfectionism yeah. is? Let's talk about what it is okay. and what it is Well, isn't. what I love that you're going to tell us is what it isn't. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what perfectionism Let's isn't. And the first there. one is <laughs> perfectionism is not striving for excellence. Yeah, boy, that's for sure. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's not, you know, it's, uh, it's all about if I live perfect, love perfect, look perfect, work perfect, then I can avoid all shame and judgment. And there's no such thing. We live in a world that's judgmental. We can't escape it, but we think we can. We think we can trick people's perceptions and we never get away with it. Then we just get more criticisms for not being real, right? Well, and two, I think, uh, my kids will tell me I'm a perfectionist when I want them to clean their rooms. Mm -hmm. So uh, they've cleaned their bathroom, <laughs> but I go in and I say, there's still a ring around the toilet. Yeah. Quit being such a perfectionist. Oh. That's not being a perfectionist. I'm trying to have a little bit of, I a guess, stand, excellence. A standard, is, right? Yeah. You're trying to teach a standard. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's actually very good. They just need to know what that standard is. <laughs> okay, the second one is perfection. Perfectionism is not, is not self-improvement. Right. So self-improvement is, what do I think of me? It's internal. Perfectionism is, what do they, all of them, think of me? It's okay. external. So that's really perception. a big difference. Is it my perception or someone else's perception? Yes. Okay. Is what, what's motivating me is like, you know what? I really want to do well at something. That's great. I really want to have a super clean bathroom. I want certain things to be done just right. That's really okay. It's not so much so that I can press, impress the, match, the masses, but it's just that that's what I want. I like it. I like it. I say that with the toilet paper over under. I like it over. <laughs> it's just my thing. I don't care if anyone else does it. Okay. That's the only way. Perfectionism <laughs> is not the key to success. Yeah. You know, the, that fear of failing keeps us all kind of tied up in knots. I mean, there's just no other way. You're going to stretch for something and grow. We're going to fail. We need to get really comfortable with failing. I love those three questions maybe you've seen from Meg Connolly. She asks her kids every day at the end of the day and herself, you know, how were you brave today? How were you kind today? And how did you fail? Mm. I said that once to a dear friend of mine over lunch. She goes, oh, I like the first two, but I don't like that last one. <laughs> it makes us really uncomfortable, but it's inevitable. We have to get really used to failing and having our, our kids fail as well. And does that mean we've taken a risk that day, maybe? Oh, it does fail? indeed, you know, even if it's just the handlebars trying to skip three of them, you know? <laughs> it's like, well, you did it. I'm so proud that you tried getting really familiar with failing, sitting there, maybe when you're bloody, broken, bruised, and sitting with that with someone and then helping them get up. I love it. Okay, perfectionism is not avoiding shame. No, you know what? Perfectionism is shame. <laughs> And we struggle with shame. It's very easy to say, oh, yeah, I'm a perfectionist, because it's almost like this, uh, this good past that says, you know, I, I really like things done well. But few of us will admit to being ashamed 
you know, but we have to sit in that there's things that we're just ashamed of. And there's a difference between shame and guilt, as we've talked about on the on the show. Guilt is I did bad, shame is I am bad. Mm -hmm. And that's why we try to wear that 20 pound shield to protect you from really seeing me because you, you may deem me not worth it. Okay, so we've laid out what perfectionism yep. is not. Let's talk about what perfectionism is. It's a few things you say. Yes, yes. So, so first, should we throw yeah. them up? Yeah, so you've got the list there. It, it is debilitating. It, indeed, it's unattainable, it's compulsive, it's exhausting, and it's almost a, an addiction. Um, you know, it's just this, like, a, like being on a hamster wheel. Something didn't go well. It's like, you know why? Because I didn't look very good that day, or I wasn't that prepared that day. So I'm going to try even harder. And we just never get off that. Instead of saying, you know what, that wasn't my best. I could have done better. But I did like how I showed up and told that one story about my first marriage, for instance, or how I am in this marriage, or things I'm not proud of. Okay, what no. did go well? Yes. Uh, I like that. We got to work on that. All of these <laughs> I've got to work on, I tell you. Um, but a lot of these ideas you got from a book. Yes. And, and a specific book. Can you tell Let us me about just it? Let say first, I'm an aspiring good enoughist, too. Okay. So we, we are all good in enough. this together. Um, yes, it's Christine Neff's book. It's, it's fascinating about self compassion. That's another term I hadn't really thought too much about. Um, how to stop beating yourself up. And she starts with this idea of self kindness. So if you had a friend, who had failed at something, things didn't go her way, or she was brokenhearted, a love interest didn't go her way, um, you'd be very kind. What would, what would you say to your friend about that and say that same thing to you? We're just so darn critical and so harsh on ourselves. And we got to be kind because this thing about perfectionism, what's scary about it is that it doesn't live just, just with me. I spread it around, right? We yeah. share it with our kids and our families. We take it to work with impossible expectations. We um, strangle our, our friends and family with it. I mean, it doesn't just stay here. So it's, it's, it's dangerous. Okay, so self-kindness. And yes. two more quickly, yes, common humanity. Yeah, just in the fact that we're all in this together. Sometimes we think, I'm the only one that this has happened to. Yes, you know it what feels I mean? so good to admit it to one another yes. and to work on it together. I have two pictures of my great-grandmothers up, and I look at them off, and I think, I know things didn't go perfectly for them, and they survived. And the last one is mindfulness. Yeah, just keep a balance. Don't over-exaggerate the, the negative. Realize that there are certain things that did go well, and just have more compassion. You know, I'm just going to believe for today that showing up is good enough, and it is. It okay, really that might be my mantra for a little while. Good oh, enough. I'd love it. Me and I'd you? I'd love it if it was, yeah. Good enough. Yep. All right, yep. thanks so Thank much, Liz. You, Amy. We'll all work on that together. <laughs>